Hi, everybody. It's Steve Olson and Wayne Steiger. It is January 18th, 2017. God dang it, I'm not going to get that. <laughs> uh, Listen, we don't Wayne, want no time you? travel. Yeah, Wayne, how are you today? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Listen, um, you know, we just got a conversation going on this, and I know we've got a, uh, our top story of the day is Brown, Dorfs, and Attention Spans. Um, we're looking at what we look at every day, and I know we're boring, probably boring people with this stuff, but I'm sorry if we're boring you, but this is really an important uh, analysis of what's going on, and I'm really glad that they're keeping this up for us to look at. Yeah. So hats off to the NASA guys that are letting us look at this stuff. So what are your, what's your commentary on there? All right, well, the commentary goes like this, is that you and I have been paying attention to this thing now for two cycles, and then we've looked at it at various other times, but now we're looking at it cyclically. And as the sun is, you notice how the sun rotates on its axis. This side of it is a positive polarity. Mm -hmm. The blue side of the sun, as we're looking at it, as down, a, down the tip of a rocket, you know, chasing the sun through space, this is what you'd see. Right. So then what you've got is you've got these, um, these are magnetic field lines, okay? See those? The dotted ones? Yeah. This dotted one, this is the magnetic field line and connectivity to the sun that the Earth has right, or um, yeah, that Earth has right here. So that's our field line, okay? There you can go. see it from above with this dotted line. That's our normal everyday Earth is connected to the sun, and that basically, that line is pulling us through space. Got it? I do. Do you? <laughs> That's what they say. Do you? Now, sheath is also a connectivity, but I haven't gotten the full definition of it, but you'll see, you'll notice that we've got this really bright white line that keeps to be, you know, keeps kind of going past our satellites. And, yeah. And comes in with the proximity to the Earth. See, what that is, is I am theorizing that that's our connectivity line to the dark star. Unless somebody can tell me different, and I would, be wel I would welcome any, you know, NASA scientist or anybody to tell me that I'm wrong. And then explain further what this huge connectivity line is. Because if this is my, uh, our magnetic connectivity, then I'd say that when you watch these big sheaths coming off the, uh, the, you know, where you have the north and south, or I'm sorry, positive and negative, coming off the sun like that, Wayne, that's a big connection somewhere, man. And that's what I was just commenting. So you see the middle graph. It shows the magnetic connecting line to the sun, and you can see the other. I don't know. You know, you know when I look at that, it reminds me of a positive electrical in looking for a negative, and it looks like it's found it. Right, and it's it, and you'll notice that those those sheaths come off the um, you know, again the poles. So it's called the poles of the sun. Well, listen, I'm convinced now, Steve, that our sun is being drained. I mean, you can say whatever you want. I think that the anecdotal evidence alone says there's something out there. And again, we don't have all the tools that the experts have. So what we're having to do is basically look at this through the Hansel and Gretel syndrome. But there's enough information, so, you know, that's explanatory information in this graph. And we, and we sense that there's something over here, you know, and we don't, we can't really place it because it's hard for us to see three dimensional states. It really is, man. It, uh, it truly is. It is. And I'm not pretending that I know, um, but everything, but the other thing that you'll notice, though, is here's Venus, the green dot. And, you know, in retrospect, this thing has been getting hammered because it's so close. It's that, just that little bit closer to the sun where it doesn't, this, this solar wind and, par and high particulate, uh, high number of particles, doesn't hit the Earth in the same intensity that it hits Venus. And I think that's why it's, it's just so bright right now, Wayne, just in a straightforward way. Well... Listen, Steve, we don't know what's happening to Venus. That's the problem. Um, I think that Tyler did a great job over on Secure Team. The yep. fact of the matter is, is that we haven't had a probe up there in 30 years. And, and, and 
don't give me this when I'm hearing people say, well, it's this normal in the southern southwest sky. It's just that, you know, people just are making more of it that there's nothing there. I disagree with you. <laughs> I find that, that there's a lot going on up there. The whole solar system, every planet is in a dynamic change. And I'm glad you pulled that up because that's one of our subscribers that pulled that out. And I mean, this is crazy, folks. Go ahead and talk about this, Steve. Oh, it's, it's straightforward. This is the moon at about almost 87% or whatever full. And that is the comparable size of how big Venus is right now. So that's the size of the moon. That's the size of Venus in our sky, what we're seeing right now. And it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. It does not. And, and it's only going to get brighter. Um, when I look at this now, we know that it's not in its full – um what's the position the disc is not on venus is not fully complete facing earth we're seeing you know a partial of it so it's very odd it is here just give me one second 